everybody, it's Natalie Barnes here from Beyond the Reef Patterns. Welcome back to Stitch. You know Lotta Jan's daughter. You probably know her from Dansk Dishes, things that you might have seen at Target or any of your home goods stores. She's also written some great books for us too. But she is also a great fabric designer for Wyndham Fabrics. And today we're working with her latest line called Lemmicky. We're going to be making this quilt behind us which is a Beyond the Reef pattern called Kahakai, Lovely Beach. Although you know those colors don't represent Lovely Beach and we'll talk about that in a moment. For information about where you can find this in your local quilt shop or for information about where to find the pattern, go down to the description box and you'll find links for all of that. We have often talked about a design intent or a design statement. Think of it as almost setting the function for your project. Let me give you an example. If you're going to make a book bag, you're going to use different materials, different hardware, than you would, say, an evening clutch, right? And the same thing for a quilt. If you're going to make something for a baby, you're going to wash that a lot more often, and you're going to construct it differently than you would, say, a legacy quilt that's going to take you four years and is beaded and has crystals on it. So that is your design intent. Also, you might come up with a theme. So function and theme might be part of your design intent for your project. We also talk about color recipes. So as an example, you come up with something for the kitchen and you say, well, I'm going to make beef stew tonight or maybe I will make some vegetarian chili. They both have vegetables in them. That's correct. They both share that. They both have broth in them, but that's where they start to separate. You might use a beef or a chicken stock for your beef stew. The vegetarian chili, you're going to use something completely different. And so every decision that you make along the way for your recipe in the kitchen or for your color recipe is going to go back to that design intent or the function. So I think when we are talking about what your design intent is or what your color recipe is from now on, because we rely heavily on that here, you will know what we're talking about. For the design intent of this project, I wanted to really represent that cold, snowy winter, that peacefulness, that calm, and then that little breath of spring that comes up just as the snow is melting, that little crocus bud or another one of your bulbs that comes up, and it's the lightest of the lightest green. So in looking at these colors here, it was easy for me to say, well, this isn't the right green or these are too dark of a gray. So I'm going to use these lighter grays and whites, these snowy whites, and this little teeny delicate green. And that's going to be my color recipe. The only difference in this project is that I did choose two whites and I included a half a yard of each. So we've got a half a yard of these two and the remaining are fat quarters. The next thing we're going to do for this project is to trim these down to 20 and a half inches, well, after you've pressed these. Trim them down to 20 and a half inches across and square up your fat quarters because we're going to cut all of the fat quarters, even including this green here, into two and a half inch strips. So we're going to cut these all down, the whole stack of them. Don't go anywhere because I bet you're wondering how we're going to turn this into that. Stay tuned. Okay, everybody, we've pressed all of our fat quarters and we've trimmed both sides to that 20 and 1 half inches. You know you always want to cut off your selvage, and I know that most of you know this, but your selvage is going to be woven differently than the main body of the fabric is. And so what happens when you put that in your quilt? It's going to shrink differently. It's going to react differently. And so you want to have consistency in your quilt top. I know you already knew that, but I had to tell you anyway. So now that we've got this all squared up. I am going to turn my cutting mat here. I love this mat because it is one of the mats that will fold and this is the perfect size for a carry-on bag in the airlines. So I just love using this. It might be a little small. You might be asking yourselves, why doesn't she get a bigger mat? But I like this one. It's a pretty good one. I'm going to square this up and then we're just going to cut our two and a half inch strips right along this way. Now when I square things up, I don't necessarily take an extra cut, but I'm going to go a little bit more than two and a half inches here. I'm going to cut this just like that, and then I'm going to turn this around. 
make sure it's nice and square on the ruler and then make the cut and this just goes away the rest of these I'm just going to cut two and a half inch two and a half inch two and a half inch and I am giving you permission to stack your fabrics we've got a nice stack of fabrics here get yourself a nice new blade make sure you've got a new needle in your sewing machine and more than one bobbin wound because we're going to sit and sew and sew and sew these together once we have a lot of these different pieces we're going to come back in and we're going to line them up in a way that's pleasing to us in terms of a mix of fabrics and according to the pattern the correct number then we're going to start sewing them together now if we sewed all of our seams the same direction we'd end up with a parallelogram right because our feed dogs are pushing everything in that one direction so when you're sewing your strips together I want to make sure that you're sewing down one side and back up the other and make sure that it's square as you go along you'll have another opportunity when you're pressing these to give them a little tug and make sure that they're absolutely square so once you get to this step after you've sewn your 10 two and a half inch squares there are only two dimensions you're going to have to remember and that is six and a half inch and two and a half inch so i'm going to place this at six and a half inch here and make my first cut making sure that everything is square and I'm using the marks on the ruler to make sure that each of these lines is lining up with a seam. So I'm going to take my first cut at six and a half inches. The next cut again, making sure that everything is square, which I think you can see here. I'm going to cut two and a half inches. And last but not least, one last two and a half inch strip. The remaining part of this block is going to be your floating dimension. The first thing you're going to sew when you get to this point is this. You're going to flip this around so that you have opposites here and if you've pressed all of your seams in one direction you're going to have a great seam to sew with nesting seams. If you can try and get your seams to nestle in there to nest your seams and get them to go down if you will so as your presser foot is pushing this seam down it's going to hit the seam underneath it you can almost just see how they're nesting right there so nesting your seams the next thing you're going to do is take a two and a half inch strip of your accent and place it right sides together on the other one of these little two and a half inch strips that you've sewn. You're going to sew with a scant quarter inch seam down one side and down the other side. This is counterintuitive to all the two and a half inch seams that you've sewn here because we didn't want to create a parallelogram. We ended up sewing one side and down the other. In this case, you want to keep this square, so we're going to sew two and a half inches all the way down with our scant quarter inch seams in the same direction. Once that's done, give it a good stabilizing press, and then all you've got left to do is cut that into one and a quarter inch right down the center. Open those seams nice and flat, and then stagger those pieces according to the directions in the pattern. What you'll end up with is a beautiful little quilt block with these types of details in it. I think you can almost see that there's a Bargello type of thing going on here because we've staggered each of these, turned them left, right, left as we are assembling our final block. Once you've got all those blocks finished, the only thing left to do is sew them together in a top and get it quilted. I think it's going to be an achievable project that you'll come back to time and time again. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give us a thumbs up. And you might even want to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next episode of Stitch. You never know when Stitch is going to show up. I wanted to ask you how you all are doing on your triangles. I wanted to share with you a little bit of what I've been doing. I've been savoring each seam here gosh it's linty and I'm using the magenta 
in that line as my accent. So you can see everything else is scrappy and wherever I have the magenta I've used that as my accent. That is my color recipe. So until next time, from my home to yours, thanks for stopping by.